السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ویلکم آڈینس ٹو دا ٹوکنگ دین پوڈ کاسٹ آئی ایم یو ہوس ماجد اینڈ ٹوڈے آئی ود می راش اینڈ بردر عشتی السلام علیکم بردرز وعلیکم السلام وعلیکم السلام بردر راش از بین ایجز واٹس اپ نیم I'm sorry bro yeah you're telling me this covid lock has really slowed things down a little bit but alhamdulillah it's nice to see you guys yeah yeah obviously uh, our audience will know that you know we've not recorded a, a talk in the podcast for a while now um but uh, inshallah hopefully we'll be uh, you know doing this regularly now i think um uh, brother ish is good to have you back on after a while it's good to be back okay alhamdulillah <laughs> alhamdulillah okay so um The thing is is we've been away for a while okay um but a lot's happened and uh, since we recorded the podcast to be honest with you a lot's happened a lot to speak about um but what we wanted to speak about today was the speech that uh, uh president macron it's, it, and just just a side note it's funny how i think it's only with the french that when you say the name you somehow try to you have to say it in a french way macron i become french all of a sudden but anyway so president macron Uh, on the 2nd of October, I think it was, uh, and he made a speech about uh, his uh, war or how France needs to fight Islamic separatism. And he spoke about new laws being introduced, things like uh, children being uh, um, enrolled into schools at the age of three, uh, homeschooling being reduced. And, and basically, basically, there was uh, a lot of resistance that I came across uh, from the Muslims worldwide I mean, you had, you had people like uh, President Erdogan, he came out and said, you know, who does Macron think he is trying to tell us, you know, uh, how to change Islam? And you even had the head of uh, uh, Al-Azhar University, who normally doesn't say much. And he didn't actually uh, quote Macron of France, but yeah, it was clear from his speech who he's referring to. Um, so I thought, you know, this is a very important topic, which we need to speak about. I mean, there's loads happening elsewhere as well. But this topic is really important uh, because even though this is happening in France, this actually has a direct uh, uh, impact on Muslims, uh, certainly in the West and all over the world. So, uh, you know, I mean, that's a bit of background in regards to the speech and we'll go more into that. But one thing is that what Macron said was that uh, they want to, France is going to fight Islamic separatism. Now, many people probably haven't come across that term and in reality it's made up anyway because there is no real term called islamic separatism but i think the best place to start would be maybe uh explaining you know to our listeners uh what exactly is uh, islamic separatism so so what, what do you guys think i think we have to go back to the speech on the 2nd of october uh when macron uh actually made the statement And to be fair, it's actually uh, built on other statements as well. And what he said is Islam is in a crisis in the, in the rest of the world. And the problem is not with our values, the values of secular France, but the problem is with uh, Islamic separatism, which comes from radical Islam. And he's, he obviously mentioned that, that Islam in France needs to be reformed or needs to be structured. And this is built on the back of a speech that was on seven months ago where he first mentioned this and he said that we're going to bring in reforms to deal with this problem now we have to ask ourselves what is this separatism it actually comes on the back of this idea of communitarianism where there's separate so there's the french community as a nation right and then there's little ghettos where the different minorities are living in their own little bubbles but what he's actually saying is they're using the word separate separatism because it's not just a community they're saying islam separates people from the ideas of france the values of the france and that's why they're calling it a republican awakening the ideas of france and what are these ideas the ideas of secularism the ideas of freedom of expression freedom of thought but what a french french person should be and what they should think and there are several sort of measures that they're talking about and as you say it's to do with the education it's to do with uh and this is the most market thing right so if you think on the history of uh, france was it or what do we know it for in europe it's one of the most legislative against islam the uh, hijab ban mm. the bikini ban i don't know if you remember that you can't wear the no but it's it's, it's a serious point a bikini ban is only obviously a bikini is for muslims only right um and um 
the you can't wear religious attire in uh, public spaces or in schools which was in 2004 but here what does he talk about the attitudes of people on the transport the, uh, the, the fact that women go to swimming pools at different times it's a mm. to totally different battle because this is not legend you can't legislate with that can you when women go and when men go what about school he's saying that they have to be in school for three when they're three years old so we're going to start educating them early so it's a whole different shift. So first they had the legal issue and now they've moved it to a whole different plane. Why are these separate? What they describe it as parallel communities, parallel sections of the French society. And this is what they want to tackle. And these are the reforms that they want to bring in. And as you mentioned, the main issue is schools and education. So teaching from, uh, from three years old and no homeschooling. And if there are private schools, where's the money coming from? And they have to sign up to a charter of secular values. So, yeah, that's a bit of a brief introduction into what they're bringing about. You know what you mentioned, Madge, about um, what is Islamic separatism? To be fair, you know how you said that, oh, this isn't really a thing. That's actually got what got me thinking about it originally as well. I was like, OK, I've heard of separatism. But what exactly is Islamic separatism? Mm. But really, um, to myself, I explained it in simple terms. It's like comes down to the lack of integration. Yeah, it comes down to a community a smaller community having a lack of integration to the host community in a very simplistic way of looking at it. Yeah. So it's all about if a, a smallish community want to detach themselves from the main body of people based on their own customs and ideals. And as we know, from a, a secular point of view, people are allowed to have their own religion. So in a way you're allowed to almost be separate in terms of your beliefs. Mm. Yeah. So, but what, what the this speech was all about is actually bringing into law kind of policies and ways of making sure that Muslims in particular are not allowed to do this in terms of becoming separate from the host community, becoming less integrated, having their own ways of solving their problems, even if it's from a, a societal point of view and not from a political point of view, that's what they want to deter and legally challenge and legally stop. And as Ishi has been saying, it's a really good point because it doesn't just, um, it isn't just an issue in terms of what is being said from the top, from a government point of view, it's gonna filter down to education, it's gonna filter down to mosques, you know, they're talking about bringing, you know, um, imams into play who have been certified by the government. How is that even remotely that how is that that goes against secularism in itself because the state is having an influence on religion so yeah, I think it that's where I was a bit originally before I started to do any reading on the matter, I was a bit like, okay, what do they exactly mean in 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 specificity so I found that side of things quite interesting you know just to add a sort of uh, an additional point it's not just a sort of like there's a very serious hostility in france against islam and it's very palatable and something that uh, macron said in a conservative or they call it ultra conservative uh, magazine is um, i'm paraphrasing quote here you know on this sort of issue and this was part, uh, about the hijab right in particular he's saying these are the daughters and the granddaughters of immigrants Right. So basically saying this is not a new issue. Right. Mm. And, you know, the fact that, you know, they've not changed and they've not adopted the French value. He's saying it's our issues for us to resolve. And he then said mm. that, how, you know, how, how, uh, how can this be? And the idea is they understanding that it's them that haven't controlled the situation, managed the situation. And that's why they're talking about structuring it and breaking up communities and all these kind of things. So it's, it's much more than just a legal issue. It's an attack on the values of Islam. And this is what they say. It's not a problem with our, it's not an issue with our values. So if there's only two things in discussion, it's either the French value or the Islamic value. You don't, he didn't say it outright. But when there's only two options, if one's right, the other one has to be wrong, doesn't it? Has to and be in wrong, this case, exactly. And this is, that's what you're saying, the values of Islam are wrong. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's a very, very important point to understand that this is what they're literally saying. It's more than just a legal, just a hijab band, they want more. Yeah, I mean, in part of the speech as well, I mean, what uh, Macron did say, uh, he said that radical Islamism, i.e. when he's saying that he means Islam, had shown the willingness to contravene the laws of the Republic 
to promote other values to to organize another society and i think that's the key point that both of you guys are saying the fact that what the french have seen is that over the years uh, we've allowed the muslims to and this is actually part of another speech i don't know if it's this speech but certainly macron said it he said that one of the problems that uh, that we have today is our own doing in this in the sense that we allowed people to live together with their own beliefs um, without actually trying to trying to change that so basically you got large parts of france you know where there's like predominantly muslim okay in those areas and what he's saying is that this has become a society within a society yeah and and i think yeah, he, he did uh, say that he did say that in his in this most recent speech and that's what that i think is a wet area to to kind of deconstruct a little bit because it's all about you know when we talk about things like ghettoization mm. it is highlighting that you know they're fearful of a society within a society and actually he goes further than what you just said there he goes further and says that smaller society then want to become the dominant society okay. and influence all other people within so it's not just the case of going we failed here because we haven't been able to contain these people living in their own way mm. in fact these people are now influencing our host community as they sometimes refer to it as and you know when they refer to those people who may have gone to syria to fight or those people who were involved in so you know, some of these terrorist attacks as they call them mm -hmm. um, they're referring to them as being native people of, of france in other words as in they were brought, born and brought up in france but they are muslims who have been influenced by this um, separatist community or this society within a society in order to now influence the greater body and that's where they're saying we've failed but actually look these guys are basically saying muslims and islam is trying to take over yeah yeah i mean and even even that's uh the quote by gerald uh gerald damamin damanin whatever his name minister minister of the interior he, this guy, he just dropped it. He said, look, French Islam must be certain that all its followers consider the laws of the Republic to be superior to those mm -hmm. of their God. Right. So this guy weren't, you know, he weren't trying to, uh, 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 trying to make his, his, his speech appealing to Muslims. He just said it mm -hmm. as it is. Okay. So, you know, we've spoken a bit about what they mean by Islamic separatism. Right. Uh, and, there's the issue of secularism, whether actually Muslims understand what secularism is. But, you know, why do you think that uh, there's a need, there's a push uh, for Muslims to accept the secular culture in France and beyond? Um, and why do you think that um, Muslims, they, they, they find it so difficult for Muslims to become part of this society uh, when other immigrants from other nations have been able to assimilate and become part of, of the society. Why is it? I mean, this is not just in France. We see this in the UK. We see this in other places where there's always the issue of, are you French or are you Muslim? Are you British or are you Muslim? I.e., you know, but you never hear someone say, are you Sikh or are you British? That, 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 mm -hmm. never, that, that question, that discussion never comes up. So why do we think that, uh, you know, why is it that uh, Muslims... Are not integrating so yeah no no really good that's a question that i think a lot of people have asked you do have to separate this a little bit i think i think you're right to say that um when we talk about it in terms of france it is ever so slightly different to when you talk about it in other countries that's not to say the underlying issue isn't the same because it is, and I think we can conclude that at the relevant point. But, you know, in France, their term, their understanding of secularism is slightly different to other countries' interpretation or the way secularism is almost implemented in other countries. Okay. In France, the, when they refer to secularism and laissez or what, as they call it, um, it's, not, it's not a perfect translation. So the translation is saying it's secularism, but actually for them, their version of secularism is so hardened that your religion, you cannot even express your religion in terms of dress or in society or in public institutions. Mm. Whereas as we see, you don't see that strength in say in, in Britain as an yeah. example. Yeah, so for them, it's very much a case of, we want everybody to appear the same 
when they're out in public. In other words, no hijab, no, you know, looking at someone, you shouldn't be able to tell whether they're a Muslim, a Christian or an atheist or a Jew or some, you shouldn't be able to tell. That's mm. the hardened form of secularism thereafter. They want everybody in society to be indistinguishable. Yeah. Um, even by color, which you'd think, okay, that, that's a positive thing. Why should you look at people by their color? But in fact, the, the, prob the way this links back to the separatism thing as well is that Muslims in France do feel othered. They do feel like, you know, they don't have the same opportunities. They, so they have, it's, it's the French Republic that have pushed them into uh, their own society. Mm. So when, you know, when the, you know, even crimin criminals and even trying to buy a house, even police stopping people, all of that is done. And Muslims in France feel um, oppressed by that. Mm. Because that's the case, it's quite clear that France in itself hasn't succeeded in that form of secularism that other countries might call it. But in, in France's version, in the French version, it's very much about how do we make sure that religion only stays within the home, okay, or within the, the place of worship. So when we say secularism, the simplest definition is separating, you know, religious affairs from state affairs. So separating those affairs of belief, yeah, in other words, state. anything yeah, from the state. So that's mm -hmm. the simplest definition. But that definition would normally allow you to say, well, well I'm, when I'm out in society, I can still wear you know, a hijab. I can still, the Christians can still put a cross around their neck. The Jews can still put their, their cap on their heads. But however, in the French ver version of secularism doesn't allow that and especially since you know what Ishti mentioned since 2004 where that was hardened and brought into legal terms and I think that's where the two things I know I probably haven't answered your question directly but those two things we just need to slightly differ ver versus secularism that we see in many parts of the world and the secularism that we see in France. I think just to add to your point and uh Basically, if you look at the history of mm. France, right? So there was a French Revolution and there was a period called the Enlightenment. And basically mm. what you have to do is look at before that. You had the monarchy and you had the church. And if you were born into a peasant, you were stuck there, right? Mm. You were a peasant for life, right? Um, and the church said you were born into that situation. So there was this like system built against people, basically, like a system of power. If you're born into a, born as a king, you're born as a king and you're going to have a fruitful life. The rest of the people essentially served you, right? And obviously through all this persecution and the control of the church, there was all these ideas developing and fermented. And the thing we have to understand is France calls itself the birthplace of secularism. Not that secularism, actually the idea was born there. That's probably born in Greece. But the thing is, a lot of the philosophers and the scientists, so it was the work of René Descartes and all these people, you know, they, they had these ideas of the, the scientific method and the, what, what a person should have, the civic, civic liberty, liberties, so the freedom of expression, or as they call it, the freedom of conscience. You have the choice to do what you want. And one of the responses was, they, obviously, there was a sort of a, a period where they transitioned away from the church and they had the re revolution. And they adopted these freedoms, the freedom of expression, the freedom of religion, etc. But what France did, which was different, because there was such an extreme sort of difference in views, that one idea had to destroy the other. And they destroyed mm. the religious symbols. They had to destroy the power of the church. And that's why, A, they have the history and they understand how the church can control them. So they don't want that to come back into their lives. So they have a fear and a suspicion of any religion. So mm. that's what it's built on. Sorry, you were going to say? I was just going to say, they almost see themselves as the guardians of secularism because yeah. they brought it about. They see themselves as the protectors of it. And if they can't um, almost ensure that it remains in its purest form, that they're doing a disjustice to all that, those struggles that occurred then. Yeah, I think so. But going back to um, Brother Maj's point, um, what you have to look at is, right, you know, every other community that's come, and I'm not talking just about France, its values can be bent, right? Mm. Because it's a, what you call it a malleable idea. So you can change what is good if there is no fixed point to what you're referring to. Whereas for Islam and Muslims, 
there is a fixed point. It's the Quran and the Sunnah, right? So we see what Allah and his messenger have revealed. Obey Allah and his messenger, right? As what's good. And this is the difference. So, you know, you won't say he's going to the pubs and the clubs because it's there's alcohol and we're not allowed to. But we're okay to talk about sports. And it's this is what we have to understand. When they're talking about adopting French values, if you adopt a value, you have to leave a value uh, mm. uh, behind. And this is what's right. required. De-adopting one uh, 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 value to adopt another value. And this is why there hasn't been an integration in the level that they want. Because they don't just want you to attend football games. They, mm. It's not about that. It's a de-adopting. Nobody's mm. saying, and this is the issue that they ultimately want to resolve and address. And that's what I feel. I don't know what you, got your, you guys' thoughts are on, on the subject. So, yes, I just want to uh, add to the point of Rashmi, because I never really looked at it in that way in regards to secularism and, and some of the things that uh, Ishti is saying as well. Because what we see is that you're right, there is a difference of, of the implementation, how shall we say, or the face of secularism in just say UK uh, compared to France. In UK, uh, UK tries to promote that look. You know, you've got your uh, Sadiq Khan, Mayor of London, you got your Sajid Javed, you know, sort of made it in, uh, in politics. And, and it tries to show that, look, the, and it actually refers to them, promotes them as being Muslim anyway, right? Well, in France, I think one of the issues is the fact that because, you know, they are so hardcore and their hatred for Islam, more than any other religion, right? We see that even if there are people within the Muslims in France who want to be secular, as in like, they want to just, they want to just enjoy their life and do what the French are doing, we see that even they face discrimination on a daily basis mm. purely because they are Muslim. So in one way, what we see is that, you know, in some countries, the way they want you to integrate is in, in a bit of a pali-pali way. Whilst in France, is totally, because of their arrogance, they are so arrogant, uh, and, and maybe the points that Ishii was saying, and, and, and you guys were saying about the birth of secularism and stuff like this, right? We see that, you know, they really don't care how the Muslims feel about this. They don't try to appease them in any way. And it's just, listen, you need to... And what, what do you get from this? You get resistance, right? And there's another point I wanted to make. Um, you know, we speak about... I think Russia's talking about oh, some of the things and against... And this goes against secularism. Are you showing a bit of hypocrisy, right? But I just want to read a quote from the, uh, from the French uh, secular, secular website. Um... And I want to make a point on this. So what it says, it says, there is, there is greater cultural diversity in France today than in the past, which is why the country needs, needs secularism now more than ever, mm -hmm. for it enables all citizens, whatever their uh, philosophical or religious beliefs, to live together, enjoying the freedom of conscience, freedom to practice a religion or to choose not to, equal rights and obligations and republican fraternity. And you know, when I was reading this, you know, the penny dropped for me. And, and what I mean by that is, they, you know, they're not being hypocritical. The, the French are not being hypocritical. You know why? Because what, what, they, what they've said there, they do believe in that. Because they talk about religion. But Islam is not religion. Islam is a deen. So, you know, all the other religions, they would fall into that. And they can become, they can have Republican fraternity and equal rights and freedom to practice their religions, but like what Ishii said, Islam comes with its own value system. Islam is comprehensive. Uh, the reference for, us, for Muslims is the Quran and Sunnah. You know, Islam gives us solutions to all of life's problems. And Islam covers your private uh, aspects and your public aspects, everything, right? So you can see that Islam is an ideology, complete system. Secularism, capitalism, this is also a complete system. So you can see how if you become secular, i.e. Uh, you adopt the new religion of moderate Islam that they've been promoting for over a decade now, then you wouldn't have a problem, even though you probably still would be in France because of their racism and their hatred for Muslims anyway, right? But generally, if a Muslim believes in Islam in the way he should do, then he has no place in France. And I think that's, that's just a fact. What do you guys think about that? I think you've touched on a fantastic point, right? And you know the fact that they see themselves as uh, the motherland, fatherland of secularism, and they were a colonial power, a lot of racism. As that, there's a, mm. there's a sort, of, uh, uh, sort of pride associated 
with with who they are and their values and their heart you know mm. the fact that they fought for them so there is a massive racism but ultimately uh in answering your question if your value system differs then you can never be a french citizen exactly uh, um and that is a, a really important point uh because at the end of the day you know when we 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 undertake any action not just a major action well like you know uh getting married or something even a minor action like buying food what do we think is it halal or haram you know many of us probably standing in the supermarket just checking if there's gelatin in this product or not because we're thinking what is you know is it halal or haram whereas where are you about to say uh, getting married is a minor action you need to scale it up a little bit there <laughs> <laughs> yeah but i mean I, but i meant like in, in our everyday mm. actions right because it's that link and that's what we mean by values this is what our values is is this okay for me on to eat or not to eat whereas in in their society it's about enjoying yourself and you know for example um enjoying what they think is good so you have to reject your value system when it comes to that so no you can't be a proper french citizen ever mm. yeah you know this is what highlighted to me when i the thing is we shouldn't be remotely surprised by any of this you know the reason for doing this podcast isn't to ha- be kind of shocked that what uh, mahron said is something we're surprised by yeah at the end of the day you know allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already told us yeah in surah al imran he's already told us that hatred has already appeared from their mouths and what their breasts conceal is far greater yeah and so we know that we know that that's why like you might listen to someone in another country who you go oh okay they're a bit more nicer to muslims but in fact they also recognize the people at the top you know the people who are the ideologues the people who understand the ideology their country is built on they recognize that islam as a religion is fine if you have this version of islam which is a religion which is moderate which fits into their society where people just go to the mosques and do things at home that would be fine but islam as this ideology as maj was saying as this deen and this is where just using that terminology puts you into that category you know if you even say islam is an ideology all of a sudden you're a radical or you're a fundamentalist or you're a you're a, you're a terrorist basically but the fact that every single muslim recognizes that islam is more than just a spiritual and a ritual and a and a, a religion that is reserved for the home every muslim recognizes that okay some muslims may have integrated more or less but ask any muslim will they say oh i i'm happy that riba is prevalent in this society i'm happy that adultery is legal yeah Mm. they're not going to say they're happy about that they'll go okay we disagree with that but at the end of the day they they they'll oppose it because allah opposes it yeah mm-hmm. ishi doesn't look so sure <laughs> sorry you know i'm i'm sure i just you when you said riba i thought you said riba and i was like riba steak ah uh, sorry <laughs> you must be getting hungry uh, no so i was just saying that every muslim will recognize that a lot of what goes on in these societies from a so even if they they don't think about it from a state point of view is opposed to what allah has bought in his furqan yeah we we recognize that and that's why we should take the words of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost and recognize we shouldn't be surprised by any of this the reason for speaking about it though the reason for speaking about it is to highlight to muslims that have been somewhat duped into thinking that living in these western lands and I'll, I'll use the uk and kind of england as an example there were many muslims for many years have thought you know what it, it's it's great here because look they let us pray they let us they even help us fund our own mosques they support us they allow us to dress how we want to dress you know we can practice our religion here so they have formed a bit of a tie with that this host community and recently you know since all this lgbt kind of thing kicked off and they're force, forcing these kind of things down the throats of our children um, in schools that is what is kind of awakening some muslims to appreciate that wait there a minute this is what secularism is when they hadn't appreciated it previously and i think that's something that i think these when we have these kind of discussions and muslims listen to it they need to start 
appreciating that this is why Islam and secularism is is at odds, is a, is clashes. Yeah, I, think, I mean, just 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 a quick point to add to that is um, you mentioned ayat of the Quran, and there, there's another ayat of the Quran. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala tells us that the Jews and Christians will never be pleased with you until you follow their way. And um, you know, I think this is something which is true. We shouldn't be surprised because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has told us, you know, fourteen hundred years ago. Um, and and actually, I read a, a tafsir of Ibn Kathir uh, many years ago, and and what he said was on this ayat was that. In fact, even for those Muslims who will accept their way and accept their religion, they will still never be accepted and they will always be seen with suspicion, right? Because at one stage, they were Muslims. So I think this is something which, you know, Allah SWT has told us a long time ago, yet there are some Muslims who do feel, like, like you said, Rash, that they are part and parcel of this society, this community, and, and they see themselves as being on an uh, equal footing as the the host uh the native people and that's just not that's certainly not the case but issue sorry uh you were gonna make a point i think you know there's a really important issue that we sort of have to address you know no speech is made in a vacuum it's a response mm. to something happening right mm. um and any speech action anything like that right so there's a couple of things obviously there's the ongoing war on islam or as they call it the war on terror you know we've got the middle east uh, great middle east initiatives and all these kind of things which uh, you can add to, which we can talk about. Uh, we've got, you know, there's an issue of racism. And not just in France, there's the European increase of the far right. So you've got people like Salvini, you've got Orban. But in France in particular, there's the increase in the far right to the point where Marine Le Pen, who's the leader of the National Front, sorry, um, National Rally, they rebranded themselves not, not oh, to be okay. racist. Oh, okay, I thought it was no, they rebranded themselves because they were seen as uh, racists. Okay. So they rebranded themselves to be more in, 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 in line with society. And especially with the EU elections, uh, they got a lot of support. In fact, they got like 23.34%, whereas La Marche, uh, which was like, a, they created a party called uh, La, 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 La Renaissance with, uh, they won it with a lower percentage, but they had like greater mm -hmm. number of states. Uh, or areas so they are the far right in france is getting a lot of prevalence so macron needs to take control of a domestic situation mm. he's got the global war on islam that he's dealing with and also with you know their what they see as their backyard the mediterranean so the issues in libya in mm. armenia so there's so many issues that he's dealing with and i think it's important to measure it's not just in a vacuum it's a whole mm. array of issues and i think we do need to uh, speak about these because sometimes muslims we oh, see islam is in crisis and response to that mm. is it islam in crisis or is it the, the, the rest of the world it's the mm. western world and its position in crisis I mean, that, to be honest with you, that's something that i was going to ask and i thought well, let's discuss it because macron did say that islam is in crisis all over the world you know so that's a question we need to look at and i think the, the point that issues made then and hopefully you guys can touch touch on uh, a bit more is the fact that mm. in fact it's not islam that's in crisis in crisis it's it's their way of life and and, and mm. i don't know about you guys but i see a lot of desperation from their actions mm. You know, can I just make a, you know what Ishi was saying, just another quick, really short point, really, just because he was saying, obviously, uh, Marine Le Pen, kind of right wing side of people vote, uh, you know, a lot of France now voting kind of more right leaning. It's quite interesting, isn't it, that originally people probably voted for Macron because they didn't want to vote for Le Pen because she was more right wing and seeing him as more centrist. But look at this speech, how, how, kind of how derogatory derogatory towards Islam it is and um, I, I suspect would you have thought maybe even some Muslims may have voted for him in, because they you know they feared the right wing originally, question, they did. Really. No, originally they did uh, originally yeah. at the time when he came into power he had the Muslim vote because he yeah. was seen as that young guy you know he's not he's not uh, racist and he's not mm. uh, uh, doesn't have an issue with Islam but it, what does it yeah. show us? It shows us that Allah SWT told us what Allah SWT told us 1400 years ago is, is irrelevant today, that it doesn't matter who the face, the, what's in their heart is the same. 
Shall I tell you what should be a real awakening for Muslims, especially in France is a great example of this. So you've just said there, obviously, Marine Le Pen, right wing, complete, you know, hates Muslims. Then you got centrist, supposedly, uh, Macron hates Muslims. And then actually a lot of the people who are, have also spoken out against the hijab ban are actually left wing. Yeah, so some of the people in the, you know, the ones from Muslims wanting to wear hijab in schools and public institutions, um, it's actually been liberal left as well who have also, who historically you would say liberal left sometimes support Muslims from a point of view of, you know, the um, a minorities being equal and all of those things. But it's in France, actually, it's been the opposite. Liberal left have also said, we want to maintain that form of secularism that this nation has been built upon and that form of secularism means you can't express you know your freedom of conscience as Ishti said you can't express that in public life so where are the Muslims to go in France if the left the center and the right all are anti-Islam and it's because all of them represent secularism and this is what Muslims really need to appreciate all sides all both wings of this political you know um, yeah, exactly. Both wings and the centre are all against Muslims. It's just that from time to time, we might go, OK, we, lean, we might lean towards the right because they might be against LGBT. We might lean towards the left because, OK, they're a bit more um, pro-ethnic minorities. But actually, we shouldn't lean either way. As Ishti said, we should recognise that it's the Quran and Sunnah that we should take our legislation from and our, our baseline and our foundations from. And then we'd realize all of this is a facade that is corrupting Muslims. You know, uh, yeah, you should go, go for it. I was going to say, you know, um, you know, when we talk to say Islam's in crisis, if you think about this, and, and uh, Rash makes a really valid point, if you actually look at their rules and their laws, right, mm -hmm. in 1789, there's a declaration of rights, you know, of people, right? And it's still um, uh, valid today. And it says nobody should be, like, no should no one should be objected to or punished because of expressing their opinion, even religious, mm -hmm. provided the expressed opinion, i.e., you know, what you're saying, does not disturb public order or establish law, right? The other one is Article 1905. Uh, which is called the Lassite Lacity. I, I, I don't know how to pronounce it. Sorry, it's French. Um, what it says is freedom of conscience, I, the freedom of belief, the freedom of you, you, you're free to exercise religion under the under the law as, as long as it doesn't offend or affect public order, right? Mm -hmm. Think about this, right? How have they used this to ban the hijab? There's this dichotomy in their societies, which they can't address. And mm. ultimately, this is they cannot address. What is a French value? Don't know. Exactly. There's no statement of it. Allegedly, the French hijab is against us. So teachers can't actually wear the hijab in school. So if you're a teacher, you can wear it to going to school. You have to take it off and then teach people. Yet in those same lessons, parents can't choose to have their children being taught LGBT issues, even if they're three mm. years old, four years old, five years old. So that expression is limited to what the state say. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so How hypocritical is, is that? So there's that dichotomy there. And it's their issue that they're struggling and they're using Muslims as a pawn in their own game and showing their own to resolve their own issues in their system. And oh, but you, know, to... you know the issue you just mentioned there about the headscarf? Yeah. You know like that, that statement from the uh, Minister of Interior when he said about, you know, that, uh, you, you know, as Muslims, they need to um elevate the laws of the republic higher than the, of their god yeah and, and 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 even though a headscarf is what it's just uh, just a piece of cloth right for 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 them the fact that that person their reference point for that particular action isn't the french republic it's something mm -hmm. else for them that's that's a huge problem and that's why you will see that unfortunately some of our some of our sisters in france you know they've fallen into the trap where they've, they actually have gone out and they're using what you guys are saying as a reference point to say, look, if everyone's free and all this sort of stuff, surely we should be free to wear the headscarf, right? But 
The point is that even them using the criteria of the French Republic for the headscarf is, is not accepted. Why? Because the way France sees the headscarf is something which is alien to, to their values, to their culture, because it emanates from a different, from another a reference point. You know what I'm say? You know, can, can I just clarify something on that, just to be a bit careful, because I know there are Muslim sisters who will come forward and say, I, I, my right to wear a hijab is my religious freedom. Yeah. And that is on the basis of secular law. Yeah. And human rights. Um, I think we should be a bit careful, though, because some people might say that because from the point of view of they want to wear the hijab. They mm -hmm. internally, they still know that the reason why they wear the hijab is because it's a command from Allah and they're going to wear it regardless. Sometimes I think we can be in, unjust on some sisters, maybe when we go, they use the, the secular framework to justify their reason for wearing the hijab. No, the no, way no, the no, problem the is, let me just finish yeah. here, where the problem is, is some Muslim sisters and have fallen into the trap where they actually might even believe that. So there's a difference. Someone might say that on the outside because at the end of the day, they want to wear the hijab and they recognize the importance of it. Others have fallen in the trap. So I, I just wanted to clarify between maybe two different stances that people might have. Yeah, I'm yeah. Ju ju just, just to make it clear, though, <laughs> is that what, what I meant was that obviously I, I don't think anyone's going to wear a headscarf because of like the French Republic. The point I was saying that even those that uh, they wear the headscarf, but even the ones who reference the French uh, Republic to say, look, these are the freedoms, we should be allowed to wear this, even they're not allowed to wear it mm. because the fact that the, the, what, the, what the headdress symbolizes, i.e. Yeah. something which is not accepted. Absolutely. I heard a really interesting argument by a secular lawyer in France, and what she says is there's a difference between France, uh, sorry, uh, the hijab and a headscarf. And she goes, what people think is a hijab is worn by a woman only, right? She goes, it doesn't come from that. It comes from an idea of modesty. A man shouldn't look at, like stare at a woman. He should lower his gaze. You know, the idea of what a Muslim should look like. And this is the problem. It's not wearing a headscarf. Women mm -hmm. may wear a headscarf. Mm -hmm. It's the fact that they're wearing a hijab. And this is sometimes what we miss. We think it's an individual thing. And that's why they say it's a community thing. It's a separatism. Mm -hmm. By wearing the hijab, you're saying I'm part of a community that has this view on modesty. Yeah. And some sisters, they they think it as a loan obligation. Maybe as, as a community, we need to work on that. But it's a community issue. But it's obviously you can see only the individual and that's why they tend to get targeted. Mm -hmm. I, I personally think that's the key point, really, because it's all to do with the, the, the sister wearing the hijab is the easy target. Mm. They, they, like we said earlier, they, they hate Islam such that, you know, they recognize that Muslims firstly want to dress modestly. Secondly, they're against the likes of LGBT. They want to put the, the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala above everybody else. They're uh, opposed to like, obviously there's gender segregation that, we, we, that uh, is ordained upon us or um, legally binding. Um, then there's like wanting to take rules and regulations from Islam. So all of these factors, I might have repeated that, that all of these factors are, are an issue that they, they hate. And because they hate these issues, the, the woman in the hijab becomes the easy target. Yeah, yeah. I mean, also as well, you know, we're speaking about uh, Islamic crisis. And what we can see clearly is, you know, what secularism has done to the world. Uh, and, and certainly in places like uh, Europe and in France. I mean, French, to be honest with you, French secularism, you know, this day and, and its relationship with Islam dates, dates back couple of centuries i mean their rule in algeria and you know half of these people try to you know uh hold a moral card where they their history of what they've done around the world and especially in algeria where they killed a third of the population yeah. right they killed a third of the population um and even what they did to the algerians within france and, and we see this uh, happening even up until today these people in fact secularism because it's a man-made belief because the fact that this is something which you know is not from the creator we see that secularism is in crisis obviously they're not going to say this because from their point of view 
uh, maybe this is the fruits of secularism, certainly in place of France. But you might remember, just say a couple of years ago, maybe more than a couple of years ago, but David Cameron, when he was speaking about how, you know, uh, young girls are being sexualized and through dolls and cartoons and all this sort of stuff. And then, you know, we've got to a stage where people, you know, uh, have the choice to uh, whether you know to, to to claim whether they are a, a different gender or an animal and and you know the the breakup of families and and the, the rate of depression and you know you see all of these things we see that subhanallah it's not islam in crisis it's secularism that's in crisis and and these people their populations are desperate and in need of a change um and we see this from our own experience living, you know, living in the West. And I think this is something which as Muslims, we should be confident enough to point out. We should be confident to point out, they always talk about our oh, jihad and religious wars, point out secular wars, point out the first two world wars, point out all this, what's happening today. This is, you know, these governments are secular governments. And what secularism as an ideology, as through capitalism has done to the world, Subhanallah, we are at a stage where I mean, you guys can might correct me where I think I think five percent of the world uh, owns like ninety percent of the resources, something ridiculous mm. like this. You know, this is secularism. This is capitalism. And as Muslims, you know, we shouldn't be just sitting there like a like a, a, a punching bag. You know, when these guys say Islam is in crisis all over the world and we just take it on the chin. In fact, no, this is not true. Their whole ideology, their whole system is, subhanAllah, you know, is bringing nothing but injustice, turmoil, misery to this world. And this is what they're actually trying to spread to the Muslims and what they're trying to spread to the Muslim lands as well. Mm. So we, we should be confident to point this out. You, you make a really good point. And, you know, there's, there's another aspect, you know, there's a lot of unemployment. There, you know, even in the UK, there's been uh, uh, issues with helping new, uh, you know, your young people buy houses because it's now so unaffordable. The same issue in France, their literally economy is struggling. People can't buy houses. And a lot of these people are looking for an identity. And this is what a lot of the research is showing that, you know, a lot of these populist movement, like people like Trump, the far right, they give people an identity because allegedly they're returning to the ideal of what these countries were based on. So that's why he's saying it's a Republican awakening. I'm coming back to what the ideas of the Republic are. And that's why he's trying to take that space back from the far right so he can gain power. And that's what it's all about. They say a lot of the vote is in the, you know, in the poor or low to average income families. As a result, it's because of socioeconomic, rather than addressing their own issues of economy, jobs, they're blaming the other because mm. that's the space grabbed by the far right and that's how they get their power and this is what Macron is dealing with so it must serve their own problems of yeah. course and that's what they're doing and that has been seen through a lot of people who are critiquing Macron's speech have said that what you're trying to do is put the focus on the Muslims because they're the easy target because your own policies your social policies how you've dealt with COVID-19 how you've dealt with um, the economic issues that the France are facing um, haven't been good so what you're doing is by trying to unite everybody against the Muslims because there's clearly a uh, a leaning right and a, a kind of a populist right wing that is kind of um, arising across Europe, then that's the easy way of uniting. As we know that, you know, when people, it's a, it's a common, when you, if you study about how human beings bond around one another, it's quite mm -hmm. clear that when there's an external threat, people, even with differences, they bond together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and when people bond together because there's an external threat, they put aside their differences for a period of time because the other is more dangerous to them. So Islam is that other now and everybody's putting their differences aside temporarily to say, you know what, let's deal with them. But how long can they keep playing that card um, to the point where people internally are going, wait there a minute, you guys, you're not we're still in under the poverty line we're still struggling the rich are getting richer the poor are getting poorer so as you were saying the capitalist system is is what is in crisis 
secularism is what is in crisis, yet they're trying to use Islam as that bogeyman in order to mask those mask that crisis. So you know what we can see is that uh, this issue that we've spoken about today it's not just a problem in France. Uh, it's a problem in in the West in the secular states, obviously, but the face. Uh, the manifestation uh, would be different. Um, and we see that uh, there is a huge emphasis um, on at the same time where they have got, uh, they are appealing to the far right. I, it's, it's, yeah. it's, at that time, it's convenient. But we do see that there is a real effort in trying to um, integrate the Muslims by them uh, removing their Islamic identity, becoming citizens first, and basically adopting like a new religion called moderate Islam, right? We see this, we see that uh, uh, there's a big call for Muslims to integrate. So how, you know, how should we uh, counter this? And, you know, what should be our, our response to, you know, the, these, type, these type of events and what's happening in France and, and, and in the West? So, so, you know, a point, first of all, and I will answer the question as well. You know, a point, first of all, is, as Muslims, the, we can't integrate into these societies in the way that they <laughs> ask us. And the reason that is, is, you know, you have to look at it from the point of view of um, other religions. Take, take Christianity, for example. Um, you must have all heard, what does it say in, in the New Testament? It says, what, render unto Caesar things that belong to Caesar and render unto God things that belong to God. It, in, it innately allows you to be secular because you can separate religion from your, your own beliefs to that which the state implements mm -hmm. so other religions and christianity as an example and all other religions fall into the same category innately can fit inside a secular system what we need to do in answer to your question as muslims is awaken to the fact that let's recognize what islam is yeah let's recognize that islam doesn't fall into that category islam doesn't say okay when we're in society let the secular governments decide all of our rules and regulations and when we're at home we decide what we can and cannot do we have to actually recognize that it's islam that needs to provide solutions for both because we should know as muslims islam is both a spiritual and a political creed and I think the, the West knows this, Europeans know this, America knows this, Macron knows this, that Muslims cannot accept the form of secularism that they're promoting. However, what they try to do, this, as they call it, it's a generational war. Yeah? What they're trying to do is change people generation after generation. If you suppress them and if you try and keep feeding them with new versions of Islam, they're hoping at some point we go, you know what, we can't um, resist any longer. Let's take this new form of Islam. Mm. But actually the opposite is happening. The reason why they're worried about ghettoization and Muslims formulating their own communities is because those people can then be influenced by the correct understanding of Islam. The reason why they want um, imams to be certified by France is so that they give a modernist version of Islam, French, French version of Islam. So the way we tackle this, in my opinion, is that we continue to teach ourselves and educate ourselves and give ourselves knowledge of what Islam truly is. We recognize that if we don't fit in this secular framework, then we need our own framework we recognize that once we have our own framework and as we had in history, that doesn't mean people who are not Muslims can't live within that. This is where they've, their secular ideology is so flawed. In the past, when Islam was dominant, when Islam existed as a civilization, the minorities actually were catered for far more than the minorities are catered for under secularism. And this is fact. Okay, there are, might be some exceptions, but the general was that the minorities were looked after. The minority, this, this whole issue of poverty and wealth distribution and all of these issues that have been born out of secularism and capitalism, those were solved by Islam. 
Mm. If if the if people now those people who are leaning towards say the right wing because you know their issues are not being solved, if they saw an implementation and a true reflection of Islam somewhere catering for the poor, catering for people's um, requirements, then they would be the first to say, "Wait there, that's what we want." So I think our duty, and just as a, just to conclude, is our duty is to make sure that we ensure all Muslims understand Islam is that, and therefore work towards it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Brother Shri? I think, you know, the first thing is we have to understand what exactly they're attacking, or what is being, uh, what the point of this legislation is. If it was successful, you know, when we, they say it's a battle of values, what do they mean, right? They mean the battles of secularism and the battles uh, idea of Islam. And both of these give an answer of what was before, i.e. is it a God or not, how you live your life, your relationship with yourself and your relationship to others. And what they're addressing is our relationship with others. And this comes from the idea of taqwa, right? When we talk about values, so how we address each other, how we talk to each other, how we deal with it. And this is the link they're trying to sever and replace it with mm. their own, right? And as you said, you have to educate yourself on what those values are. That's the first step of protection. What they're trying to do is control what interaction you have with the society. So if you give your child at the age of three, at the age of three, they're going to be taught secular values. Think about this, right? They're going to be taught it's okay to live with a mummy and mummy or a daddy and daddy rather than the traditional mum and dad family. They're going to be taught all these kind of things, whereas they're going to be seen, it, what's going to be alien to them is a woman in hijab, which is going to be considered not the norm. And this is the idea. He even said some p children are being taught that music shouldn't be, uh, you know, no music, but we consider it a part of our values. And this mm. is the idea that making this not the norm. So the first thing is, at this moment in time, you need to understand what our values are and how that links to our relationship with Allah. So we have to strengthen our knowledge and then we have to pass this on and share, share this wealth. What we can't do, as others highlighted, was use secular ideas to justify Islam. So if you look at it, where does culture occur? It occurs within the confines of the law, but within a community. So ladies wanted to swim, they developed the bikini. They kept that idea, tried to keep the idea of modesty, whether it's right mm. or wrong, it's a different matter. But mm. they tried to adhere to both worlds, right? They tried to adhere to the hijab in a lim limited state. But the fact of the matter is, Islam has its own culture, but it's born from values. And it's those values that they have want to sort of separate from the person. So first, as he said, understand where those values come from and what negates those values and see how to defend it. And the other thing I would say is have confidence in Islam. It's not Islam that's called all the problem. You know, when people say there's gross poverty, what is that a result of? Globalism, these massive companies robbing countries blind, destroying the rainforest. It's not Islam doing that. Even in the Muslim lands, what's caused this? There was peace between Sunni and Shia until the West interfered for its own nefarious purposes, right? Sometimes have confidence on what Islam has actually done. Do not be held account accountable mm -hmm. for what Islam has said to be done. Re do your research and have confidence. I think that's the main thing because too often we're on the back foot. Um, and I think it's also important to understand what's going on because you can see Macron is trying to save his own skin as well with the far right power. So we have to understand all that's at play here but first and foremost, work on that relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that is what is going to save you. Yeah, subhanAllah. I mean, to be honest with you guys, just uh, summed it up nicely there, you know, that uh, we do see um, there's a lot going on. We see attack on Islam and Muslims. But, you know, something that Rash mentioned um, a little while ago in the podcast that we shouldn't be surprised. We're only surprised if we're away from our deen. And that's the reality of it. If we're close to our deen, the weird, uh, and, and link it to what Ishi said, we know why there's a problem. We know what is the problem, you know, and, uh, and we know that, uh, you know, the, the West, for them, the biggest issue is for Islam to return, for the, uh, the Khilafah, for the Islamic State to return, and, and, and why this would be a big issue. If you think about it, if today they're using these sly tactics just to stay in power, Imagine now when the, they will have no excuses, when you'll have a state which is going to be distributing wealth correctly, 
the, the, the non-Muslims who, who live there, they will be living in a way which Muslims don't see in, in, in the, in the non-Muslim uh, lands. You know, here they try to show that you're equal, but then they show their true face. In Islam, we tell you straight, if you accept Islam, you're, you are one of us. If not, you pay the jizya and you, you know, you have your rights and you go with that. You know, it's very clear, it's very open what you're, you know, who you are, what your rights are. But here they try to show everyone's equal and stuff like this, yet the reality is different. So, uh, so it comes from knowledge, comes from understanding Islam. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, I don't want to just repeat what you guys have said, because I think, you know, uh, you, you hit the, the nail on the head, as they would say. Do you, just a quick point. You know what? There's an irony attached to when they say that Islam is in crisis. You know, when they say Islam is in crisis, if there is any crisis, it's caused by them. Yeah, they're the ones that are bombing the crap out of our countries. Mm. They're the ones that are, are funding uh, militias to go and fight in our countries. They're the ones that are trying to create this version of Islam and promote it in our countries, this ver version of Islam which is foreign to us. Mm. They're the ones that are, are promoting some of these nations, you know, like the Arab nations and the leaders who are traitors. They're the ones pushing those traitors to create these versions of Islam and cause disunity among Sunni and Shia and cause all of these problems in Muslim countries, yeah? And they're the ones that are trying to make us in Western countries adopt their values when we have our own values. So if there is any crisis, and no doubt there are Muslims in the world and there are many of many people that might be confused or might not have had the clear version of Islam presented to them, but that's because of their actions, not because of our actions, not because of what Islam is, it's because they're caught trying to cause a crisis amongst us. Whereas in secularism, their crisis comes from the fact that their ideology is false. Their ideology is, is broken. They've tried to come with their ideology from man's limited akal, whereas our, our ideology comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator himself. So okay. I find that very ironic. And just, just to add a small point to that, Rash, is that all of the things you mentioned, all of the things, that's towards the people who don't have a state. That's towards the people who are without the without the shepherd without the shield and look how much effort look how mm. much trillions look how much effort they're putting in because they know they know the same thing that the, what the Quraysh you know knew what the other people knew is that when this state is is established when the justice is served then their thrones will be taken away from them and that's the reality of the matter and uh, and yeah, you know, what? I want to bring this podcast to to a, to a close, guys. Um, I think you guys have you know uh, shared your final final points. I don't know if you want to add anything else to that. Um, I'm not sure. I'm sure, Rash is all right. She, I don't know if you want to say so, say something at the end. But if not, then uh, I think we can uh, we can bring this podcast to an end and uh, to a close. And Jazakallah ahead, guys, for uh, for this uh, roundtable discussion. And Inshallah, Taala, you know, uh, we plan to. Uh, be maybe uh, bringing out more podcasts regularly, maybe every two weeks or three weeks, like a roundtable discussion as this, uh, speaking about the latest uh, issues that uh, need to be addressed. And as Rash said, a lot of the stuff we said today might not be new to you, but it needs to be said. And there are people out there who are confused, as in from the Muslims. And, uh, you know, we need to uh, uh, get that message out. And, uh, you know, inshallah, for everyone listening to this, if you benefit from it, certainly share it with family and friends. And also, you know, like and subscribe the Voice of the Ummah YouTube page and, uh, you know, Facebook. And we're on all sorts of social media platforms. You can go and check us out, Voice of the Ummah and Talking Deen. And on that note, uh, guys, I'm going to say big jazakallah khair to you two. Barakallah khair. And um, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu to you and all our listeners and viewers. Thanks for watching that video. For more exclusive videos, please like, share and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget, you can listen to some of our shows wherever you are because we're also available on all popular podcast platforms. And for more Voice of the Ummah content, make sure you check out the links to all of our social media platforms in the description below.